welcome to angling for you today you join me for the start of this video on the deck and and this video obviously is going to be about the floating feeder now this is absolutely unbelievably requested by many people i get this continuously asking me when am i going to do it when am i going to do it again obviously the original one did really well it's 30 000 views really popular now today i'm going to show you how to make it now it's been really difficult to get out and about to buy in fact the one originally that i used to fish i, I have no idea I, I picked it up from pete's tackle years ago and i don't even know if they even sell it um and I, the only ones i can see are like tackle for you they're about 5.99 there's some on ebay it's much cheaper much easier to make your, to make your own and you can obviously make that whatever size you want there's just a few little tricks and a few certain things that you that you need to to do when you're making it we will flip to the my box and zoom in closely so you can see and i will show you exactly how i make it and how easy it is. right guys so what do we need there's a few simple little things that we need to make this rig number one you're going to need a knife we're going to need that to to cut the polystyrene number two you're going to need a feeder now this is really important you need a plastic feeder once we strip this lead off which i'll show you how to do it needs to be floating so we need it to be plastic if you get one with metal obviously that's going to add extra weight and obviously it's going to sink so we need it to be plastic so we'll, go, we'll come to that the next thing is feeder link swivels these are just pressed on ones any type will do they don't need to be too big and they're just obviously for connection uh, when we're uh, when we're looking at putting it together so the other two things sorry the other three things are the scissors and some uh, ply uh, some pliers or forceps that's to bend off the uh, the metal on the on, on the feeder any sort of array of elastics i like um the red um the red i think it's 11h from preston um i feel that's a, just a good elastic i'm just going to snip a little bit off there but this is why i keep my odds and ends in my bag and the last thing is some polystyrene obviously just any sort of polystyrene you get in a box that's that's fine that's fine now polystyrene polystyrene obviously that doesn't absorb water it's sort of got a waxy sort of finish on it and that's uh, obviously really important don't be putting a sponge or anything like that in it because it's obviously going to soak up water and you're going to be sinking so next is the pliers so they've got little uh, sort of grippers in there if you get if you get your your, your pliers or your, your your forceps in you should be able to just get that in and bend off the weight Oh, that weight from the feeder if we can get it off being a little bit fiddly and you're left there with your cage so like i was saying it has to be um, a plastic cage you don't want uh, anything to to resemble a uh, a metal one because it will just sink and that's not going to be good at all so the next thing we need to do is look at the polystyrene now obviously that's for the feeder that's quite thick we don't want it to be that thick it wants to be a lot thinner than that uh, and that's where the knife comes in so i'm not gonna do this on top of my box i'm gonna do it straight onto this plastic because you don't want to damage anything like that so i'm gonna give myself plenty to work with just cut that down to the size that you want it and then just go around nice and simple and once you've got a sort of guide you can go around without the actual thing so we've roughly got the size that we need there well if we open up the feeder itself and we have a look you can see just a little bit off just need to trim that down a little bit more it is a bit of a messy job um so i wouldn't recommend doing it indoors um unless you're doing it on top of something that you can easily vacuum up otherwise like me i would be in trouble with the missus so that's what i want i want a little disc in there it doesn't have to be absolutely flush 
um, with the sides it you know it nice and simple and we can sort of it's done sorted now with the rest of it we need to look at fastening it so we need to fasten up the side of this feeder with a little bit of line um, 020 is absolutely fine for this so once you've got that that first that first tie on you know it just going to trim it down a tiny touch and then we're going to put that piece of polystyrene back in there and it's a real simple process now it's a little bit like putting your shoelace in we're going to pull that round it just get that straight polystyrene straight and once we've done that we're just going to thread thread it through each each section to pull it together if you got like so I know we've sped up the camera so you can see it uh, so you don't have to watch me thread it individually one by one but that's essentially what we're left with We've threaded that line all the way through and the piece of polystyrene is wedged in the end. Now what I would do and I would suggest is to take a little bit of your polystyrene and put that in your box because if by any chance you do get a snag or anything like that and it pushes that polystyrene you've got some more in your box to fix the feeder which obviously is really helpful. Now what you can do um, and which I will actually do at the end of this is put some super glue around the frame of that polystyrene and that just gives it that extra bit of assurance um, which I'll show you when we get to the end part now once that's done it's obviously not the most super aerodynamic thing in the world but it doesn't have to be we're not it's not it's not about that it, we are throwing it very short distances it just let me say that Right guys, so with your elastic, make a, a small loop and put that through, pull it down on itself, so you create uh, a loop in the elastic and it's not going anywhere and cut off that tag end, you can leave a little bit of a tag end if you want to, that's not a problem. Um, Put that loop through the feeder and pull that elastic down to that feeder. Now, what I find is elastics sometimes pull, and this is the the easiest and safest way to do it. Um, and it is it's a no nonsense rig. This it's going to be, you know, just carnage. Uh, when you start fishing it so there's going to be no messing about with it no finesse or anything so with the rest of it what you want to do is just make that into another small loop like so and pull that down and just snip that So what you're left with is your feeder with a little bit of elastic attached to it with two loops on it. You know the knot's gonna, not going to pull because it's doubled over and the important thing is when it hits it's going to go upside down but it's also not only joined at one side so the feed can come out nice and easy. Now what you'll find is that you get an absolute hammering of bait that comes down um, and a lot of fish that come and, and attack it so you want to make sure that you know it's it, it's it's going to be out of the way and it's going to be able to take that battering so the next thing is your feeder link and it, this this is the simple part you'll see the rig when we're on the bank 
with the editing with the uh, magic of uh, magic of editing it's going to be in a couple of couple of minutes which is uh, pretty cool so just slide that through onto the elastic and out of the way and then hook that on and then you will have once I slide this elastic back to the top a link on it so this is going to be attached to your line like so and then that's going to hit a feeder bead a, a little bit of a quick, quick quick change bead and down will be your hook link which you'll see in a minute when you're on the bank and obviously the feeder will be sat above it like so like that and all the feed will drop the this will be on the line the hook link will be underneath it and the fish are going to be irresistible and they're going to be annihilating it so yep there's lots of other ways you could do it there's lots of other ways that people will do it this is a quick simple easy way of that i've done it with the things that i've got yes i would prefer if if this was one piece and didn't have to fasten it with any line of course i would um and you know if i got some some braid i could tie over the top um of course i could but i i just i do like the stretch and the elastic um and it gets absolutely bashed about and i think it just gives it a little bit more um rigidity and the the pole elastic itself um I've, I've always done it that way and just a little bit of a shock absorber so fingers crossed we're gonna have a lot with it let's flip to the pond and uh, you'll catch me on the bank And welcome to Angling for You. And today it's the one you've all been asking for. It's the floating feeder. And uh, it's a little bit of a twist to the original that I did. Uh, and it's fishing the floating feeder on the pole. Now, as you saw, if you've, you've uh, been watching the channel for a while, the floating feeder um, on the uh, on the feeder on, on the actual feeder rod um, is devastating. And as you can imagine, it's no difference on a pole. So what we'll try and do is get the fish going and uh, then we'll uh, have a look through the rig and uh, see how we go on. Perfectly in the lip. So like I said, I'll get I'll get another bait on and we'll we'll get back out and then we'll go through the, the bait itself. And it really is simplicity at its best. Now it's it's important to know that when you are fishing it, it's not a, a floating bait that we're doing. It's just a feeder itself that floats. So slow your feeder up. And you want to try and aim sort of the same spot where you're fishing as much as you can and give it a little flick and a pull down it wants to to hit the wall with a splash that's that's really important obviously when you're casting it um, you will it would have that splash and you can see there straight away it's absolutely buried We've only just started using it, that's two fish and two chucks. They're home onto that noise. So it really is important that that splash that hits the water when you flick it out, <clears throat> that, you, that you do do that. Hooked again perfectly in the lip. And a lovely little Lovely little F1s, beautiful little fish. 
Let's get him back in. I'm going to go through a little bit through the rig. Now, what I've done is I, I've done a little bit of um, work at home where it shows you how to make this rig. Now, the only addition to this is because you're not allowed elastics um, at Lindome, is I've changed the top part to braid that's attaching instead of elastic. So the rig itself is 020 mainline. I've got a couple of feed, uh, feeder stop beads um, at the top and we've got a, a feeder swivel which is running on that uh, to another two to beads to, to adjust the depth um, of what we're going to have the pellet drop in. The feeder itself, like I said, I'll, I'll go into detail when it, when it goes on to um, the other slide of me building it. But effectively what's happening is the feeder is staying up in the water and the pellet is sitting below it. Now, the pellet itself is a 4 mil fishery pellet because you've got to have uh, um, fishery pellets. It's a 16s KKMB that we've got on and it is, like I said, a 4 mil on the band. Now, the ground bait itself is just a mixture of bits and bobs of ground bait I've, I've had before. That's not the important. The important that it is it's, that it's quite dry, so you mix it, and when you normally mix it and then you leave it, and it goes dry, um, but it's still got a bit of moisture in it, that's what we want. And the reason for that is, it, when we th flick it in and it'll, it'll sit on top of the water and it'll give a little bit of a cloud, and that's what we want, that cloud. So it's a little plonk on top of the water and you're just holding the line taut you can see that the fit that the they're almost eating the feeder to get to the bait so maybe that we need to even shallow up even less than than what we're at but it is a working method so like if i haven't had a fish like now um I, i've got hard mill pellets as well so i do throw them out into the same area just to keep the fish going as an addition but if i haven't got one within a couple of seconds then i'll just go straight back in and i'll put the bait straight into the ground bait and we'll shuffle straight back out and getting yourself in an organised system with everything to hand and there we go look at that straight away they're on it and it's no no messing about it's honestly so devastating of a method it really is if you've got a venue where fish like to, to feed shallow and, and you need you need a, a venue where fish are competing um, and if you can get them on, on a, get this on a venue like that either on the pole or the rod it's devastating you see with the, with the pole it's, 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 a, it's a lot quicker because you can flick it out um, and get them sort of competing really easily with a rod it's a bit more difficult but still just as effective if you've got a longer chuck if the fish have pushed out further than what your line is um, then you know it's it, it just You've got to work it though, it's, it's no good just throwing it in and leaving leaving it to sit there. You, you, do, you do need to, to work at the method itself. So it's got, it's a, it's a feed method, so you need to obviously keep that feed going in and keep those, those fish competing. So we'll fill it up again. I do apologise that my feeder beads do keep sliding. I didn't. These are a bit too big. That's only the ones that I had with me. So if, if you try to get the tighter ones, um, then they won't move. Uh, but it's it's not end up well just to slide them. But so again, look, you just throw it out, and they're straight underneath it, absolutely all over it. You can see them swirling away for it, and sometimes they miss your bait straight away because the they're so obsessed with getting the feed and that's not a problem so if, if we've not got one straight away shuffle it back in fill that feeder up and it's just good to get yourself in a rhythm have it having your your stuff to hand and again they're underneath it again into another fish again and that's what we're loving this bait as soon as, as soon as it hits the water as soon as it hits the water it's uh, they're absolutely having it 
another since a little left one this time. Oh, in and out of the net. Still a little left one this time. And again, perfectly, perfectly hooked inside the mouth. Let's get some more ground bait in there and uh, get it back out there. Another fish on. I caught so many F1s today, it's just not even true. Well, well, well over 100 today. Closer to 200, if not 200, if I'm honest. Absolutely crazy. It's fishing and all shallow and a mixture of different methods, one of them being this floating feeder. Another fish. There's a little bit better stamp with this F1. A little bit. Stamp F1. That's a proper F1, is that one? That is definitely a proper F1. We'll get. I'll lift that one up. Looks perfectly in the top, top left. See if he'll play ball. He's a proper. He's a proper F1. That one. Lovely fish. Let's go back and see if we can have some more. And now we're into another fish and just absolutely buries it. Absolutely. Nailed that. Another nice F1 and definitely caught a few of those today. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that gives you an idea, like it's really easy to make. Um, obviously I've done that in, in, in better detail, um, a close up at home for you. So you've, you've seen that, you've seen how deadly and, and effective it can be. And you know, 
anywhere that there's some competing fish it, uh, it can be a devastating method so give it a try at home it's quick and easy to build on you and by yourself you can buy them but not none that are, 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 are amazing to be honest not a massively found thing but you know give it a try hopefully uh, you'll catch as much as uh, I'm, I'm gonna catch on it today and uh, join us on those live feeds on Facebook uh, we're looking at uh, seven o'clock and we're on Fridays and we're re really sort of enjoying people being on and sharing their sort of thoughts and what they're doing and how they're fishing and all that kind of stuff so that's fantastic and then join on eight o'clock at Instagram at angling underscore for you for exactly the same and again and just enjoy chatting about people and what they're, what they're catching um, so yeah like share subscribe share them with your friends um, tick that uh, little bell icon and let it notify you to when we have the next videos and you won't miss out thanks a lot for watching until the next one guys Tight lines. <laughs>